Hi there, it's Darren Docterman. Welcome to this tutorial, the first of hopefully many. Uh, this is going to be about texturing, and specifically texturing uh, starships in 3D. Specifically those kinds that you've seen in the Star Trek movies, etc. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, people asking me to uh, explain how I go about uh, texturing, and uh, so I'm going to do that right now. Let's uh, pop over to Modo, which is my program of choice these days. Uh, I really enjoy its uh, modeler and its renderer, and uh, it's really good. I'm previously a LightWave uh, user, and uh, used that for many, many years before converting over to Modo for rendering uh, about you know, two years ago. And uh, it's the program that I use most often now, doing concept work and... Uh, modeling and rendering and that kind of thing. So you can see here I've brought in the main pieces of the LightWave model that we did back for the Star Trek the Motion Picture Director's Edition and it's uh, it looks pretty good here in Moto uh, after only a little bit of work and I added some lights and uh, a lighting rig and some uh, environment lighting as well just to give us an idea of what it's going to look like. And uh, one thing you can see on the primary hull is if I can move it up here is the uh, ever famous Aztec patterning on the primary hull. This is the only surface that I've put this on right now uh, because when you bring in a model from Lightwave into Moto it uh, behaves differently than you might expect and there are some things that you have to change in order to make it look its best. So we're going to go through that right now. For an example of that, let's go over to... This is the secondary hull that I brought in without any changes whatsoever into Moto from the, the LightWave file. And, you know, it, it looks pretty good. It's certainly passable, but uh, it's not the uh, way that we actually want it. And there are a lot of things that are being handled differently. For example, you see the uh, front deflector dish, the glow is correct, but uh, it should be colored uh, either at uh, impulse speeds or warp speeds. It has a different color in the motion picture. So we'll open it up and we'll see the uh, all the shaders that we have. Let's uh, scoop this open so that we can see the name of the textures here. Uh, deflector... Uh, glow, deflector glow, there it is. Now it, you see it has uh, a few l different layers of uh, textures and if we double click it, here is our color layer. This is the uh, image preview that Moto has um, and that's the image that it's using here. Now in LightWave when you have a color you put it into the diffuse layer and that's what it uses to draw from even if it has a luminous layer as well. So uh, Moto behaves a little differently. Moto wants you to, in addition to a luminous layer, which is this, it also wants a specific luminous color layer. So in order to give us what we want here, we want to go down and switch this to luminous color. And there it immediately updates and we can see that is closer to the amount that we want. Uh, and we'll bring up the opacity of that to 100% to give us the full magic. And we'll take down the fractal noise a bit. It's a bit noisy. And if, if you want it even more, you can duplicate that. and you can even multiply over it to give it a, a deeper color. But that's not what we really want right now. What we really want to do is concentrate at this paneling on the side. And that is something that takes a little reworking to get it the way we want it. So let's find out where we are. Let's see. Secondary home sides and bottom. That's it. Now let's click this off to make sure that that's the area that we're looking at. And yes, it is. 
So that's the shader for that for those polygons right there. So we'll open that up and we'll see what's going on in here. Right now we're just getting the specular map. We'll shut that off. And there's the diffuse map. And the diffuse map and the specular map are just about the same. I think they may be inverted of each other. But uh, this, the diffuse map, of course, gives you the darkness of the polygons. And the specular map gives you the way, the amount that it bounces light off of itself. Okay, so we're going to turn off the uh, diffuse right now. And uh, we also have a bump map which isn't showing up right now because it needs some settings changed. We also have uh, the diffuse of that bump map, map and uh, I think that's also uh, misaligned as well. So we're going to have to fix that. So let's see what we can do here. Turn that on, turn that on. Okay. Those really aren't contributing anything to uh, the Moto mask, so let's just uh, go down to the diffuse, turn that on, and uh, we'll take that down a little bit because it's a bit too heavy. So we'll bring that down to maybe 50%. Now, for this specular map, we'll turn that on. For this specular map, we're going to also want a uh, color. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer of gradient. I stopped and started to get uh, a handle of what was actually going on. Uh, but as you see here, this is the texture layer for the top of the primary hull that I've already done. And so you can see here's the gradient and it is uh, added as a specular color and the input parameter is texture value. So it takes the value of all the other textures below it and it applies it to a gradient and here is the gradient right here we have basically a uh, uh, chromatic progression uh, at all these sections of the uh, grayscale so it will give the value of these colors at the various levels of gray on our uh, on our texture and what we're doing is we're adding it very small it's like 34 and a half percent as you can see if we bump it up more it would get more chromatic and that's not really what we want so we'll take that down a little bit about 34 and a half again so that looks about right so what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this We'll go back to our items, we'll go back to our secondary home.